Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. We are so delighted that you are here to worship and fellowship with us at City Temple, Seventh-day Adventist Church, where our mission is to show God's love, share God's love, and create other lovers of God. Whether you are in the church or viewing us online, please take a moment to note the following announcements. Hey there, City Temple Church family. Our usher board and junior and senior deacon boards are on the lookout for enthusiastic individuals interested in serving our church family and community. If lending a hand and spreading some love sounds like your thing, they want to hear from you. To get more information or to express your interests, please reach out to Louise Gibson or Deacon Charles Gibson. Let's work together to make a difference in our church, our community, and beyond. Church, join us in wishing a joyous and blessed happy birthday to Anita Ray Jones as she celebrates tomorrow, April 14th. Let's shower her with love and prayers for a year filled with abundant blessings and happiness. Happy birthday, Anita. Join us for the Power of One, presented by Motor City Youth Federation at Burns Avenue Seventh-day Adventist Church on April 19th and 20th. Enjoy Vespers at Conant Church on Friday night at 7.30 with Pastor Seth Bromwell, followed by Sabbath service at Burns Church again at 11 a.m. with Pastor Dr. Aaron Chansey, and stay for lunch as well as an AY rap session at 4.30 p.m., followed by a fun night at 8.30. It's an event you won't want to miss, so we hope to see you there. Attention all parents and grandparents, mark your calendars for April 20th as the Children's Ministry Department presents Painting with Love during Children's Church. It's a fun and creative event your children won't want to miss. Church family, join us for a wonderful opportunity at the Motor City Elders Council Elders Training on April 20th and 21st at the Community Fellowship SDA Church, where Dr. Vincent will be our esteemed guest trainer. Let's come together for growth and fellowship during these empowering sessions. Mark your calendars for our Education Day on April 27th, centered around the theme, Unsung Heroes, where we will honor individuals whose contributions often go unnoticed, but profoundly impact our lives. Join us as we delve into their stories and celebrate the quiet strength and resilience that shape our community. It's an event you won't want to miss. Attention all departmental ministry leaders. Please mark your calendars for April 27th as we will gather for a meeting after the church service 
followed by a delicious lunch. Hope to see you there. Church family, please note that our next church business meeting is scheduled for April 28th at 10 a.m. Your presence and participation are vital as we discuss important matters concerning the future and well-being of our church. Please attend and support. Church, we're excited to celebrate Senior Citizens Day on May 4th, a special occasion to honor and appreciate the wisdom and contributions of our beloved elders. Join us for a day filled with joy, fellowship, and gratitude as we come together to cherish the invaluable presence of our seniors in our church family. Join us on May 4th for a delightful church fellowship dinner as we celebrate Senior Citizens Day with a special concert at 4.30 p.m. featuring Rebecca Willis from the Living Waters Crusade team and her friends. It's a wonderful opportunity to enjoy good food and uplifting music in the company of cherished friends, church family, and community members. Hope to see you there. Church, pray for our sick, grieving, and homebound church members that are unable to attend church at this time, that they may feel the comfort and strength of Christ from our church family. Thank you all so much for listening and a joyous and happy Sabbath to everyone. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay, we'll try that again. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning, good morning. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Join in with us as we sing Emmanuel. Come. and adore Him. Come, come let us adore Him. Kneel down before Him. Worship and adore Him. Amen. And the Lord of Lords, Emmanuel. Oh, we worship you, Emmanuel. We've come to lift up the name of Jesus today, Emmanuel. Cause he's a good, good God. Yes, he is, Emmanuel. 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 Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. 
How can we say thanks for the things he has done for us? Things so undeserved yet he gave to prove his love for us. The voices of a million angels could not express our gratitude. All that we are and ever hope to be, we owe it all to him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for those who are here at the temple and those who are watching online. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for waking us this morning, for the mindset to bring us here at the temple, whether we're here in person or online. Every movement we make, we thank you. Lord, we can give praises with our voices, our hands, with our smiles. Say thank you, thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath again, church. Good morning. Happy, happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Good morning, happy I'm Sabbath. Happy to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. We're going to sing our opening song, To God Be the Glory. Great things he has done. So loved he the world, he gave us his son. And we're going to sing with everything we have this morning to God be the glory. All three verses and to God.
Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory for all the great things Amen. he has done. Amen. Amen. Good morning, City Temple Church family. Friends and online viewers, my name is Tristan Slaughter, and this is my grandmother, Aretha Petaway. And we are here to welcome you this morning. Thank you, Tristan. Good morning, everyone. And isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Do we have any visitors in the congregation this morning? We want to recognize you at this time. Amen. Good morning. Welcome and happy Sabbath. Well, Tristan and I would like to share with you something we've been learning in Temple Town. We've been learning about the early church as it is told to us in the book of Acts. And the word for today is koinonia. And koinonia is a Greek word that means fellowship. It means having things in common and unity in purpose. Tristan, can you say koinonia? Koinonia. That's right. Church, can you say koinonia? And Temple Town children, can you say koinonia? Koinonia! <laughs> yes. The people in the early church were united and wanted to be like Jesus. They want to show God's love, share God's love, and create other lovers of God. They had koinonia. <laughs> yes, and guess what? That sounds familiar. We have koinonia here at City Temple as well. So now it's time for us to get up and show our koinonia to everyone in the congregation today. Happy Sabbath. God, he 
friend of God. Friends of God, He calls us friends. 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 I think there's some worshipers in the house this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. You are a friend of God. He calls you friend. I come here this morning on behalf of the City Temple Stewardship Department to give you an update about how we're doing on our budget fundraising. Truly, you can sing and shout that you are friends of God because we've got movement. We are still going up. So give yourselves a hand. Hallelujah. I am so very, very proud of you. And you know, every time I come to talk to you, I say, I look at the budget sheet and I say, where are we? Are we with those dreaded parentheses around our number? And I come to tell you again, guess what? No parentheses, so hallelujah. Remember when the parentheses are there, it means we're in the red. When there's no parentheses, it means our spending. We're bringing in more than we spend. And so hallelujah, I am a friend of God. I am a steward. You can say that about yourselves. Now, what I want to remind you of, if I have given you or you requested a copy of the book, Get Realistic. Would you raise your hand if you have a copy of the book? I need to see you over there because now it's time and it has been time for us to really start our prayer war as we are working to think and pray about being unrealistic. So if you have a book, if you know your friends got a book, I need your phone numbers and I need your email addresses so I can start talking to you and we can start planning our prayer as we seek unrealistic results from God. Are you with me on that? Uh-oh. Are you with me on that? And I just want to tell you, so far we've read chapter 1 and 2. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and start reading chapter 3. But let me just highlight some of the points in chapter 2 that Pastor Snell says. He says, true biblical faith is not risky. You know, some people think this whole idea with the budget is risky. But it says when we have true biblical faith, it is not risky. It is rooted in authentic relationship with God who cannot fail. 
true Bible faith is where Pastor Snell says, I follow the teaching of scripture, even when it collides with the conventional wisdom of the moment. At times, God will bring you into conflict with your budget. At times, God will bring you in conflict with your budget, your spreadsheet, your comfort, or your normal conditions. But there is no failure in God. The only risk are perceived. So the last thing I want us to say together about our budget, there is no failure in God. Say it. And we're going to believe and continue to make progress. Remember, meet me under the balcony today so we can start having our organized prayer about our unrealistic faith on this effort. Have a blessed Sabbath. Good morning, church family, and happy Sabbath. I would like you to turn around and look at the doors. Do you see some little people? Our ushers, let's give them a hearty amen. Because when you have children, they do a willing service to God. You do not have to push them. They are happy to serve. So I just want us, when you see them after church, to tell them, good job, well done. I'm proud of you. Let them know that you appreciate their service. Um, of course, the pastor is not here. The pastor is home, ill. So it's up to me to do the birthdays. And we only have one birthday, and Miss Anita Ray Jones, wave your hand, Anita. Her birthday is April 14th, and she wants to celebrate this day all by herself, to not share it with anyone. So happy birthday, Anita, and let us sing happy birthday to her. Happy birthday. Amen. Enjoy the day. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath again, church family. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. So this um, is a special music slash praise and worship segment. I hope that's okay with you all. Oh, mercy. Okay. Well, that's all right if it's not okay. We're just going to praise the Lord anyhow. Amen. <laughs> But this week, um, you all know that the eclipse took place this, this Monday. Did anybody see the eclipse? Okay, a couple people. And you know, this song that we're getting ready to sing came to me um, just because we serve such a great God, right? right? So when he comes back and cracks open the sky, everybody's going to see. You know, we'll all, everybody across the globe on Monday was outside staring up, looking with those glasses. So I just thought of this song and I just said, we serve such a great guy and we have to sing about him today. So join in with us. The songs are familiar. So please worship in the best way that you know how. Amen. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me, 
how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. H to H, he sends, and time is in. Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God at three in one. Father, Spirit, and Son. The Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God. your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. You're worthy of all our praise. You're worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Your hands, mighty are the works of your hands. Your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. You're worthy of all our praise. Worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the works of your hands. 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 Our
Good morning, everyone. Our God is great. And you know that our God is great because he has done so much for you. And he's done so much for me. And sometimes I make the mistake of trying to repay him for his goodness to me. Not even close to being possible. But when I think about his goodness and I think about his greatness, I'm just happy that I know him and that he knows me and that he sees me and he blesses me. So there's no other way to say it. There are no words that could express our gratitude to him. And it's time for us to lift our tithe and offering this morning. But I want to say this. Don't feel guilty if you have little to give today. Because God will even bless us if we have the desire to give. And if we do have to give, we pray that we will give according to his riches in glory. Will we all be blessed? Will the deacons come forward at this time? Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Father, we just want to thank you for the sunshine today, sparing us from the wind gusts yesterday, sparing us as we traveled to church this morning for giving health to our bones. Lord, we just want to praise your holy name. And as we lift this morning's tithe and offering, Lord, we pray that you would bless that which we have left that it may cover all of our needs. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, we do ask all of these things. Amen.
Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. And this is our time where we continue asking the Lord for the blessings. This is prayer time. This is time for all of us, even those online, to have a conversation with the Lord. It's just as simple. Just like I'm speaking to you, talk to the Lord the same way. Before I pray, those of you who would like to come down to the altar, you may do so at this time. Just feel free or right there at your seat. There's so much for us to be so grateful for. We ask him everything. But let's just thank him. Usually on our uh, Motor City Unity prayer line, uh, and I'm in charge for leading out the prayer time, I asked everyone always on Sabbath, whatever you ask the Lord today for, just thank him in advance. Thank him in advance. Let us pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for, again, waking us this morning. We thank you for the sunshine, even the rain that we've had. We thank you for traveling mercies, for getting us to the temple on time. Even for those who are watching online, you had to let them know it's time to turn it on. We thank you. These are just little things we take no thought of, that we should just thank you for every breath we breathe, for sight, for hearing, being able to speak, even those who sign, sing. We thank you, Lord. This morning, we continuously are thanking you for taking care of all of your children, all those who have grands, great-grands, great-great-grands, Lord. Taking care of your seniors, your super seniors, Lord. We're grateful, Lord, as you've taken care of James Smith Jr., James Smith Sr., Margaret Morgan, Irvin Sutton, Margie Smith, Sandra Morgan, Barbara C.A., Kenneth Watson, we don't want to leave out his wife, Trudy, takes care of him. Christine Everett, her son that takes care of her as well. And Lord, we're thanking you for taking care of uh, one of our brother Gibson's friends, Sam Braxton, our very own pastor, Pastor Neville Lindor, Elder Roscoe Gray, Pastor Trisha Payne, and her hubby, while he's uh, they're traveling about, we don't want to forget our first lady as she takes care of her hubby. We're also lifting up one of my dear friends as she's continuously recovering. We thank you, Lord, for her continuing with speedy recovery. Sister Ann, you know who you are. And Lord, my, uh, the Kraft family, Colin and Phyllis, can't forget about you. And there are so many others, Lord, who we see from day to day or we call on them. We thank you, Lord, for the peace and comfort that you continuously give to our bereaving families. Yes, Lord, there are so many who are ill. The devil thought he had us because of our pastor who's supposed to speak. And then Elder Gray, yet the Lord always have a ram in the thicket. Pastor, I mean, Elder Clarence Martin, the Holy Spirit moved upon him. And he said, yes, Lord, allow your Holy Spirit to cover him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord. Use him in a mighty way. Each one of us here, Lord, as we petition you silently and those online, we lift up your name on high. We say thank you for loving us, though we don't deserve it at all. Continue to teach us, Lord, to love one another. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you for our songbirds here, our musician, Sean. We thank you for our young ushers. For each and every one of us and our families represented, we say thank you. I say thank you to the AV team. I can't forget them. Again, Lord, allow us to receive, accept, and obey, and share what you have in store for us all through this Sabbath day. Again, we say thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from the second epistle of Paul to the Corinthians. And we'll read from chapter 2. And verse 9, Second Peter, chapter 2, and verse 9. We're reading from the King James Version. We'll also be reading Psalms 23. And verse 6, shall we stand and read together? Second Peter 2 and verse 9, together. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of the temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Let's read that one more time. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust to the day of judgment to be punished. Now turn to Psalms. We'll read Psalm 23 and verse 6 together. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May the Lord richly bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of his word. You may be seated. my shepherd, I shall not want. I am his, and he knows me by name and loves me as his very own. He watches over me day and night, and he provides everything I need. I will never live in want, for my shepherd lives to care for me. Nothing shall separate me from his love, and his love goes on forever. In kindness and mercy, he leads me to beautiful green fields and quiet still waters. He restores my soul with forgiveness when I fall, with courage when I am weak, and with comfort when I am sad. By his love he leads me to desire all that is right, and I am moved to adore him because of his grace. What a blessing it is to be led by my shepherd. In steady confidence and bold courage, I walk through a valley that shadows death. I will not stay in this dark place, because it is only a passage that leads to greater things. There is no danger here that can hold me or destroy me, so I will not be afraid. My shepherd is with me, and if my shepherd is for me, none can stand against me. With the authority of a king, 
He carries his rod and staff and uses them to protect me from all harm. Vicious enemies threaten my life. Darkness sometimes confuses and frightens me, and at times I am distracted and dangerously wander off the path. But when I see him, I take comfort in his strength, and I am restored by his mercy. I may stumble, but my shepherd will not let me fall. He prepares a table before me, a complete feast of every good thing. Although the enemy seeks to steal, kill, and destroy, I am not afraid, because the great shepherd promises me life. I will not be robbed of his blessings. He will grant me his blessings no matter how difficult the day or how fearsome the enemy. The good shepherd never grows weary, and I know I can rely on his strength. He anoints my head with the oil of healing and protection, and with it, he marks me as his own. If I am sick, he will make me well. If I am tired, he will give me strength. He lifts me up by his mighty power. On this journey from pastures to gentle streams, and from dark valleys to abundance and back, I am never left alone. My shepherd is with me. His favor and his mercy will follow me every single day of my life, when at last we will arrive at his magnificent home in his perfect kingdom, where I will enjoy his blessings forever. Yes, I will live with my good shepherd forever and ever. Bulletin list the speaker for this morning as Elder Roscoe Gray. He was to be the backup for Pastor Lindor, who became ill. Unfortunately, Elder Gray became ill, and it just got progressively worse that last night he said, I can't speak. So I had to call one of my elders. I called Elder Clarence Martin, and this was at the 12th hour, literally, and asked him if he would speak. And Elder Martin, without hesitating, said, sure, I will speak. So I asked, please pray for Elder Martin, and after Serenity Sings, the next voice that you hear will be Elder Clarence Martin.
Sabbath greetings to you, church family. Those who are with us today and those who are worshiping with us online. I have chosen the words of a song that is found in our church hymnal, number 214, and it says, we have this hope that burns within our hearts, hope in the coming of our Lord. We have this faith that Christ alone imparts, faith in the promise of his word. We believe the time is here when the nations far and near shall awake and shout and sing hallelujah to Christ our King. We have this hope that burns within our hearts, hope in the coming of our Lord. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we come to you to thank you for what you continue to do for us. You have allowed us to worship together. You allowed us to focus upon you. And we look forward to that day when we shall spend eternity in heaven with you. These things I ask in Christ's name. Amen. Have you experienced a serious storm in your life, such as lightning? A tornado? You know, we are blessed in Michigan that we don't live in a high tornado state. We have floods, and there are floods all over the world. Hurricanes. If you grow up in the islands, you experience hurricanes. If you live in Florida, you experience hurricanes. I remember when I was very young, and we had a significant storm, and my younger brother was a little bit younger, so I don't know if he even knows this. And the wind that night was over 130 miles an hour. And you know what it did? It moved houses from one side of the street, and it took the houses to the other side of the street. And we have seen the disaster taking place in the world. Every day, we see more and more people mourning the loss of loved ones. It's as if, if we talk to someone, they will tell us that such a, such a person has died. This week, my wife and I plan, to, we can't attend the funerals, but my wife and I are gonna watch the funerals on TV. One of them, is a close cousin of mine, my age, and the other is a neighbor of hers. And it's happening all the time. This is a big issue for us because it causes pain and suffering. As Christians, do we have to suffer? Yes. Yeah, we do suffer. But here's the other part of the question. Do we have to lose hope? If we lose hope, what could happen to us? We may not make it into the kingdom of heaven, so we have to keep hope alive. One way or other, we have all been touched. In the US, more than 300,000 people died from the COVID, you remember that? And that was just a couple years ago. And guess what? The coronavirus is coming back. And I know we don't use all the things that we should use, but knowing me, sometimes I don't get close to people because of it. And I don't like to shake hands too much with people. And I disinfect my hands. Am I wrong? No, I don't think I'm wrong. We should not be sorrowful of those who have no hope because one day, if we are faithful, God will remove every tear from our eyes because there will be no more sorrow in the new Jerusalem. 
And we look forward to the day where there will be happiness and joy. Just like the group that sang this morning, we get excited because it touches our heart. And I just want to thank you for the music. Because we are hurting, should we lose hope? The answer is definitely no. Based on what is happening in the world, we know that we are close to the end of time. During my senior year in high school, and I, told my, I gave my class this testimony when I was around 16, I was convinced that Christ was gonna come very soon. And you know what? I didn't wanna finish high school. I said, why should I finish high school when Christ is gonna come? Christ did not come at that time. And it's been a long time. Should I lose hope? No. Are we living in a dangerous world? We hear of wars and rumors of wars. You see what's going on in Israel and Gaza. One country is shooting the other country and a lot of people are getting killed. Even in Detroit, when we watch the news, we hear of shootings taking place. It makes me not want to go out. And it keeps me locked in inside. And just because I'm locked in inside, does that mean that I'm safe? No. Somebody could drive by and throw stones in your house, shoot guns at your house, and you die. That is so important that we have to stay connected to God. The first scripture I would like to share with you is from Psalms 23, 6, and it was read to you. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And another scripture is from 2 Peter 2, 9, and it reads thus, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. When Christ comes again, he's coming to take the faithful ones home. And what will happen to the unrighteous? They will be destroyed. Which side? See, we have to make a decision. We have to decide which side we're going to be on. Are we going to live and serve God, or are we going to serve the devil? Who is the overseer of our lives? For sure, God does. He knows our beginning because he created us, and he knows our ending. Jesus Christ was crucified for us to be saved. We need to continue to put our trust in him and live according to his holy word. The only faith that will benefit us is that which embraces him as our personal savior. Many hold faith as an op opinion, but saving faith is a transaction by which those who receive Christ as their personal savior join themselves in a covenant relationship with him. That means we have to have a relationship with Christ. It makes sense because that's the only thing that will take us through the storms of life. A song goes like this, when the storm of life are raging, whom do you want to stand by you? You want God to stand by you. You don't want the devil to stand by you because the devil likes to put you into the ground. And God wants to raise you up. So we have to keep hope alive. A living faith means an increase of vigor, a confiding trust by which the soul becomes a conquering power. And if we keep faith alive and live according to God's principles, we will be saved. That is our hope. Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold fast to the confession of our faith 
without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. If we continue to sin deliberately after receiving the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment. The result of sin is hell and damnation. I want to be in heaven, and I'm sure you want to be in heaven. When Jesus was dying on the cross, there were two thieves, one on either side, that were hanging on crosses on either side. And one, at one time, both men railed upon him like the priest did. One of the thieves became very desperate and defiant and was not penitent. He even shouted out to Jesus by saying, if you say you are Christ, why don't you save us? I like the other thief. The other thief was not so much a hardened criminal. He had been led astray by evil associations. He had seen and heard Jesus and became convicted by his teaching. He even asked his command companion if he did not fear God. They both recognized that death was imminent for all three of them. Three crosses, three people, Christ in the middle, one thief on one side, and the other thief on the other side. They were put on the cross not to live, but to die. I like what one of these says, and what God said to him. The Holy Spirit was working within him, and, asked, and he asked Jesus for forgiveness in humility and love. Christ assures him of his forgiveness and stated that he will be saved in paradise. It doesn't mean, according to my understanding, that when Christ told me he was going to be saved, when Jesus died, Jesus didn't go to heaven right away. There were a number of days before Jesus went to heaven, but the thief probably died. But one of these days, he's going to be in heaven with, with all of us who are saved. Again, when I'm in my car, I like to play hymns. I remember hymns a lot. And this one says, when the storms of life are raging, stand by me. Can you face all storms by yourself? When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, <coughs> thou who rulest wind and water, <coughs> stand by me. So we want Jesus to stand by us at all times. <coughs> when I'm growing old and feeble, Jesus, stand by me. When my life becomes a burden and I'm rearing, nearing a chilly Jordan, O oh, thou lily of the valley, stand by me. You remember how you were when you were 17, 18, you're strong, you can walk up steps and go down steps. In fact, not only walk up steps, you run down, up and down the steps. When you reach my age, can I do it? If I try to do it, I better look at where I'm going because I'm going to slip. So you want Jesus to stand by you, especially at all times. But when you age, some issues crop up. When facing the storms of life, how should we stay connected? We should praise God for his faithfulness and forgiveness. And this is found in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, <coughs> he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We can't forgive our own sins. Only God can forgive our sins. 
We have to praise God for the gift of faith. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Pray that God will make you faithful in the small things of life. Tell him some of those small things in which you need to learn to be faithful. Pray that God will give you faith and help you believe. You have to believe in Christ. If you don't believe in Christ, are you going to make it? No, you're not going to make it. You have to believe in Christ and live according to what the Bible says. Pray that you will not trust in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Just because I may have a good boss or a good wife, don't tell my wife I said this. <coughs> Should we always believe everything she wants me to do? <coughs> she may get back to you if she hears it too much. But we have to put our trust in God. Because he's the only one that can save us. <coughs> Praise God for being faithful and listening and answering our prayers. Praise him for what he is going to do for you. <coughs> Faith works. A, a good brother. Thank you. My throat was drying up. Faith works by love and purifies the soul. Through faith, the Holy Spirit finds access to the heart and creates holiness therein. Man cannot become an agent to work the works of Christ unless, unless he's in communion with God through the Holy Spirit. It's just like if we have a pastor who preaches, if he doesn't believe in God, can he help us to be saved? He'll be just like us. So we have to keep connected to God. Every act of life, however small, has its bearing for good or for evil. Faithfulness or neglect in what we apparently make the smallest duties may open the door for life's richest blessings. So if you are faithful to God, are you going to try to do what he wants to do? Are you going to try to reach out to others and encourage them to be faithful? Because if you say you're a Christian, you have to act like a Christian. You have to live a Christian life so that you can reach out to others. We are to behold Christ and by beholding to become changed by him. We must come to him as to an open inexhaustible fountain from which we may drink again and again and ever find a fresh supply. As I tell people, when you get up in the morning and you go to the sink, and maybe it's just me, do you look at the water before you drink it? Is the water going to be always clean? If there is a leak in the water line down the street. Can that dirty water come into your system? Yes, it can. And so that's one reason why we tend to buy bottled water, so we can look at it. And if I need to drink the water in my house, I let it run for a while to clean out the pipeline. I know I'm speaking to Doug about this. So we have to keep faith alive. We have to keep our trust in God. And I have chosen a hymn which is going to be played by our people of Sears. And I want to give them a minute. I don't see their faces yet. And it's one of my favorite hymns. When peace like a river 
attendeth my way. When storms are like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, Christ has taught me to say, it's well, it is well with my soul. So, at this time, let's hear from our guys upstairs.
your presence here today. Lord, we, our hearts are full and we are blessed and we love you. Lord, we thank you for the message. We thank you for the songs and your word. Now unto him, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end amen Please be seated.
Vamos.